I guess for me, it's really important that every time I start a painting, for me to make it interesting, I'm kind of like starting over. So I'll ask myself, what is a painting? What can be a painting? What can be included in a painting? And that can come about through anything that is sort of happening to me in my everyday life, like a photograph I might take or something a friend says to me or a visit to the museum a favorite painting I might see there, or interests I have, like in um, embroidery, or textiles, or um, different types of art, not necessarily um, even painting, so. Um, can you edit that down into something? <laughs> so, okay, every time, so then once I, start, I usually um, make little sketches I could show you. Um, I'll just, you know, maybe have a photograph or a painting and then, in, or I'll just even be doodling in this sketchbook. Well, this doesn't have any, but like this one. And maybe do a sketch like this in the sketchbook or be looking at, um, photo and then from there I'll start to think about the materials I'm going to use and um, try to think about doing um, oh, okay yeah good <laughs> like this I actually started with that idea for a painting then did you know I do tests on a little smaller canvas, um, working out the materials, whether it's going to be acrylic or oil, or sometimes I'll use watercolor or pencil or all different materials. So, but it's always a question in my mind. Like I always leave it open. Like it could be anything. Cause I feel like for me, painting is a, it's a question and a problem and, a, and an interesting problem to try to think about. And always to bring new things into it makes it interesting for me to make the paintings, so I have to keep it interesting so that I keep wanting to make them, I guess. <laughs> um, when everybody you, hits that point. When it, yeah. You know, where you go like, you think, oh, oh, I, I do this. No, 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 it's, it's not, it's beyond that. It's like, you know, you start talking about, oh, yeah, I do it because, and, and then it's like, why, well, why the hell do I do this? I yeah. It, right? It's like, it's hard. So what, I can talk, one of the paintings in the show um, is a painting I actually, it has a, uh, some red lines coming out on the floor. Um, they're really just marker on, on a raw canvas. And that painting, I actually was walking around LACMA and saw a William Merritt Chase painting and I was like, oh, I love this painting. It was of a girl reading a book with the Solana paintings behind her. Well. There's no girl, there's no book, and it looks nothing like the William Merritt Chase painting, but that's just sort of how I start, and then I'd go back and go into a sketchbook and maybe do my own drawings of it, and then I might even go and use the computer to drop in colors because I find it like really an easy way to work because uh, you can hit all these Pantone colors really fast and instead of having to mix up every single color. Um, but with that actual painting, I... Um, so I, I had the idea, I knew I wanted to have lots of little paintings and this idea of this floor. And so the most, what was interesting to me is just making this painting where most of the paint is actually only in a sliver on the top of the painting. And the rest is just kind of almost blank. And, and then leaving it open so that there's this sort of uh, expansive or generous quality where all these different ideas of paintings can be um, sort of experiment with within the one painting and so um, with that I you know I I allowed it so those squares some of them I had ideas of what they would be some of them were references to other paintings that were in that particular show so they were paintings that I either was going to make or had made but not very many and some of them were just like doodles I did on the spot or some were homages to uh, friends uh, paintings and then at some point you know I was having friends come in the studio and I was like, hey, why don't you paint one of those squares? And my mom was here. And if you notice, there's two little Amish people. I know she did that one. And my, my brother did one that was uh, 
there's a vol he told me the story of it, but it's like there's this little volcano scene of him. I, I don't remember. It was kind of scary, but he faded one of them. But it was just leaving it open so that influences in their everyday life can influence a painting and it's not some rigid structure. And that I feel like for me, making art has to be something I'm actually enjoying doing. Otherwise, I'm not going to do it. So I guess in that way, I would want, um, I think I've said this before, like the instead of making your day fit around making the paintings, that the paintings fit into your day so that there's um, just sort of an equality with the rest of life and the rest of the world and, and your what you experience. And so in that way, I don't know, it just sort of feeds itself and I can, you know, go on and have the next experience and uh, change and grow as a person as well as a, an artist. <laughs> yeah, it's really just things that I'm drawn to, and that um, I don't really have it. Um, it's really inexplainable. It's kind of like I, when I've given lectures before, I've talked to students. It's like really, I can't. It's like the way you like chocolate. You just like it. You don't know why, and you know maybe the next year you like, um, you know, hazelnut, I don't know, but you, you, don't, you don't know why you're drawn to some things, and some things you're drawn to over and over again. For me, definitely one of those is nature, and that's a broad term, but a lot of uh, plants and flowers and, and things like that, even though I'll leave, I'll maybe do one or two paintings with a lot of that in it, I'll always be coming back to that, and Another one of the paintings that's being shown in the uh, in the exhibition is a of a a landscape with seagulls, and that was from a, I went on a three week um, vacation with my friends, and we went to Mexico, and we were near Tulum, and I think I don't even think I took a picture, but it was this idea of this this flat blue sky and these birds flying on it, and you know that. That was where it started, a sort of image in my mind, but then, you know, it turns into something else. And I mean, ultimately, the paintings are all, always trying to be paintings. They're not trying to, you know, refer out to the, to the natural world, but to, to use that as an inspiration point to allow, you know, something to happen within the, the world of this, of what can you do in a, because I think that's a challenging, interesting thing. Um, a question is, what can you do on a, you know, a flat surface, a rectangle on a white wall? And I think it's, you know, it's got an infinite number of answers. And I think it's, to me, that's like what makes it interesting that there's just, it's so full of possibilities that anything can happen there. And that, you know, um, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, when you read when you read reviews, it's like that's you know, oh da, 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 they all talk about the dilemma of the painter, or what the painting's problems are that need to be solved. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> you mean like people think there's a problem with painting, or no? I think more um, like one of the questions a painter has to ask herself or himself before they can set to work. Um, I'm trying to think of a review I just read. Or sort of how do you have the nerve to make a painting in the face of the history of painting? Oh right, because you're intimidated by it. Well, it's just, it's just like all been done. Right? See, I think it's that's just way. such bullshit. <laughs> I mean, I just think that there's such that that's the whole problem now is that you know there's so many paintings that need to be painted and need to be made, and I feel like um, I think it's. It's got so many, you know, that there is a sort of, you know, constipated view towards it. Like, oh, we can't, I don't know, what should I do? And that is in all making art because you're taking a risk and you're putting it out there. And surely with painting, there's the most experts or something instead of maybe another field that doesn't have as many experts yet. Um, but I just think, you know, that's why you're here is to, to not 
have fear, but to move forward in your what you're what you love and what you're you're drawn to, and to make things that are you know and that represent in some ways your what you value. And I definitely feel like you know I couldn't say there's a one to one relationship with what I value, but there's uh, in the paintings, but there's like a um, the spirit of making the paintings is something I value, and I definitely would want, if people were looking at my paintings, to feel like they were, in, rather than think there was any meaning, but to be more inspired to go home and make their own painting. You know, I just don't, because I, I feel it's like the act of just doing something in the face of the lethargy or everybody else telling you, you, you can't do that, or you can't do this, or you should only walk this one way, you know, you just that you feel freedom to, because there's just so many, the possibilities are just endless, and I, I feel like, yeah, people aren't taking it as much advantage of that as I would like to see. Cool. Okay. <laughs> cool. <laughs> no, that's, it's really, especially at Boca, that's really cool. <laughs> no, I mean, I have the experience all the time, you know, with like relatives or something, you know, and, and they, oh, I, I don't understand art, and you know, and then you take them to a museum and go, okay, now what do you feel? What do you, you know, and they tell you exactly what they feel, which is usually eighty percent of the time, right? What it's yeah. about. Yeah. And I say, well, that's what it's about. And they go, I mean, but I don't know anything. How can I know? But, but that's it's just you know it's that relationship. That's it. Huh. And I go, oh, I thought art was something else. <laughs> yeah. No, it's some. I don't know why that is. I guess because it. It's in these big buildings that look like you couldn't own well, the building or something. But it's how they, it's because people aren't taught about art at all in school. Right. I mean, people know that people write books, but I'm not sure that people understand that that people make paintings. Right. They like think they, they're just they, made they out just, of the ether they're, they're or something. On, they're on the wall. That's <laughs> what's in well, there's not that much. To, I mean, I, it was funny because before I came over, I was reading our file on on your work, and I was reading one review after another, and I was so frustrated because it seems so much more about the, their writing than your painting, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, people I mean, get really freaked out about writing what, about painting, I think. Well, yeah. It seems like, especially abstract painting. Yeah. You know, that it, se it seems so much they were caught up in their, they didn't say anything, basically. Mm. A lot of times they just describe it, <laughs> like what they think it looks like or something, because they... I can't get much further past they, they that. Don't, they, don't, they don't seem to, they don't seem to get that, that spirit. Yeah. They're so, you know, intellectually looking for something to say and... Who are writers Benjamin, writing for? Benjamin Weiss. They're writing for <laughs> each other, not for the artist. <laughs> well, I think that's true, but that's what's out. That's what people yeah. come, you know, when they read books, that's what they, they come up against. Uh-huh. I think, um, I think especially that, I think it doesn't show up to me. Oh, that's cool. Do you think we're done, or or do you need more? You did a great job. Do you have anything else to give us? I can't think of. Hmm. Well, what's the? Can you describe your painting? How you work in like a sentence? How I work? I mean, how, what your work is? How you think about your work? I mean, you said you, said, you already said. You mean this. the process of making it, or? No. How do you think about approaching it? How do you? you know, what do I mean here? I know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you 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 go into a place in yourself somewhere where you when you start to work on a play on a piece. Uh huh. I mean, is that something you can talk about, or is that entirely like a? a it's pretty intuitive. I mean, yeah. Space? I, it's pretty much just making decisions and choices on a very, you know, intuitive level. But also, you know, what's intuition but like everything you've experienced in this lifetime, if not others. <laughs> you know, so, I mean. <laughs> Is there anything particular that, that draws, like the embroidery? Were you, was there anything about embroidery that you just loved and that? I don't know, it's something I've done. I was one of the first things I did as a kid was embroidery. I, it's, I don't know why I'm so attracted to it. It's just, you know, it's something I've, you know, I like the, I actually, with some of it's the cruel, cruel work I'm really attracted to because there's, in order to represent something, they uh, someone who's doing cruel work might use um, 
one way of knotting or looping the uh, yarn in here to represent like a certain thing and then change their whole stitching method to represent another texture or something. I think in the paintings a lot of times I'll, you know, go from material to material within the painting to, to whatever best suits that idea. So like with the seagull one I was describing, there'll be, um, you know, there's a thicker paint to rep actually represent the seagulls or, you know, down at the bottom, I thought of that as the ocean coming out and, you know, it gets thicker as it comes out and, you know, the sky is a, is a really a flat house paint. So it's different materiality and there's some airbrush. And so I guess that's, something that there's a corollary, corollary relationship, but I'm just really just attracted to it. But I'm also attracted to probably pretty much all painting <laughs> and um, textile design from, you know, all different eras and different cultures, Indian textile design. And, um, yeah. I, did a thing where I went around to a bunch of different museums this summer to like the Victorian Albert and um, this um, Stiftung thing in Austria or Switzerland that was like all uh, you know ancient from Coptic to Peruvian textiles to you know French like bizarre silks and all of it was really amazing and I, I look at that stuff the same, I think the same way I look at a painting. I mean, it's just, um, you know, using what you can you do with this in this, what is essentially two dimensions into trying to make a, a picture or pattern or whatever you're going to do. Um, and just the variety of what people have done is just amazing. I mean, and yeah, I think I saw the show at the Art Institute of Chicago. Um, I think it was in 1997. There was a, a 50 years of Chicago textiles and they had actually kind of almost stretched um, maybe eight foot by 12 foot panels of textile design um, design that was sort of people who had been working under people who'd taught in the Bauhaus and um, when I walked in I was like this is just like a painting show so I was like it sort of like introduced to me the idea that I mean I don't my way of looking at them, yeah, I mean, people were thinking of them as yardage or, you know, to be used in a certain way, maybe for curtains or um, upholstery, but um, in, in a really, you know, common way, they're, they're essentially the same things. I mean, there's a total common thread between them. I mean, at the same time, I'm really interested in the, you know, I'm always thinking about the edges of a painting and, you know, it, um, I definitely, I went to school at RISD before I went to CalArts and there I was, you know, took these classes with, that were, we were taught like Hans Hoffman style drawing techniques and it was basically to learn, you know, basically from Cubism and Cezanne forward, how do you make space in a painting and what, about, what does it mean to have a square that you are working with and just rigorous training in that way. So. I mean, that's probably something that textile design doesn't have is this, you know, idea of the space of the painting and the edges and all that, which I'm really interested in. I think you could tell from the work in the show, it's, each one is a different type of space. And I, I'm always thinking about that, like, is it an infinite space? Is it a flat space? Using maybe one point perspective uh, or, you know, even an, you know, a more, abstract um, or pattern space. I mean, just thinking about all the different things that a painting can do and sort of almost exploring all those and starting over every time, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Is that good? Right. Okay, cool. <laughs>